I was standing on 13 T right over here, four under through 12 holes, and I was ready to go to the parking lot. I was so mad because I was, you know, as good as I can hit it for 12 holes, and I'm four under par. I knew that, you know, I was letting a, a good round get away. Number one was a two putt par. Two was chipped it up to gimme for a birdie. Number three, par. Four, par. Five, par. Six was a par. Seven, almost made a hole in one on seven. Eight, six feet for eagle and missed it. And nine was almost a birdie. Ten was almost a birdie. And Eleven, almost a birdie. Twelve, right under the hole, perfect. Like eight feet for eagle, just under the hole. Couldn't have been a better shot. And I missed that. Thirteen was a key one because I told myself that, you know, I make putts every day. And I hadn't made a putt to this point in the round. So I told myself that on 13 tee because I was pretty angry after missing the short eagle putt. Hit a good little wedge on 13 here. Made about a 15 footer for birdie. I hit good shots on 14, uh, good drive. Hit a really good, you know, four or five iron or something to the back pin and then I made uh, like a, I don't know, maybe a, maybe a 20 footer for Eagle. So that got me to seven under. And now I'm like, okay, well, that, now it feels like, okay, well now this is a good day. Sixteen, Hogan's Hole. Back in the heyday, uh, Ben Hogan played out here and this was his favorite hole, so it's kind of been dubbed as Hogan's Hole. Hole about a 400 yard par four, but you gotta thread the needle between two big overhanging trees. And if you don't get it right in the perfect spot of the fairway, uh, you're gonna be severely blocked out. And then there's a, a pond down there, so you can't hit like a little low runner from the trees. You're seven under. I'm seven under. Three to go. Feeling pretty good. I've, you know, I know I've got a good round going. Uh, 60 isn't even in my brain. I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm just literally <laughs> just trying to See if I can get a two iron in play. At Muni, I will take my three iron out of my bag and I'll, I'll carry four wedges. This shot was a perfect 51 degree wedge, my, so my gap wedge. Any par here feels really good. Any birdie feels like you stole one. Thirteen was birdie. Fourteen an eagle. Fifteen was made a par. Sixteen birdie. Seventeen seven iron to an inch. So I'm nine under, and I'm standing on eighteen. I had told myself going into that day that I was going to lay up on 18 because I wasn't trying to win the tournament that day. I was just trying to shoot a good score. And there was a group on the tee and a group that they were waiting on that was on the green. And uh, so I had to sit there for 20 or 30 minutes waiting for the, the groups to clear. And back and forth in my head, just kind of, you know, I had the good angel and the bad angel on my shoulder. And uh, ultimately, the, the devil won that conversation and I pulled the driver out and uh, hit it just perfect. Uh, landed just short left of the green. It rolled up again, perfectly under the hole. I had like a seven foot eagle putt. And I was standing over the putt and my only thought was, don't leave it short, you idiot. And uh, whatever you do, just get this putt to the hole. Because the uphill putts out here, if you've never played here, are so slow because they're so grainy. And so I felt like I absolutely smashed this putt. Of course, and it barely got to the front lip and fell over into the hole for 60. Like anybody that plays sports or, you know, an artist who paints, you want to sign your name on it and, and you want people to appreciate it and you want to be able to appreciate it yourself. And uh, so that's something for me that uh, the golf community was as excited about it as I was. You know, when you when you have something good happen in your field of whatever it is you're doing and, and other people are excited about it too and that makes it that makes it feel that much 
more, more special and more meaningful. Because I remember breaking, broke to the right, so it was probably about here. And uh, yeah, just, you know, you're in that, having a really good round and Gotta get it there somehow or another, and it's hard. I, that's that's a that's a putt I I as well as a lot of other golfers struggle with. I had to go over there and get a bunch of pats on the back. It was pretty cool. <laughs> One thing Grady told me afterwards, he was like, you never broke your routine. You played every single shot the same as every other shot in the whole day, which was something that, you know, when I look back at any good round of golf that you play, that's something that tends to happen where, you know, you don't speed up or slow down. You just, you kind of stick with your, stick with your routine and, and um, every shot, you know, again, whether you miss a little putt or you make a putt or whatever, it kind of doesn't affect you. You just kind of go to the next one. Go through your deal, figure out what you're trying to do, and then hit it. If it works out, great. And some days, <laughs> a bunch of shit goes in. <laughs> some days you shoot 60. Some days you shoot 60.